A Selection from Miracle on Maple Street by Linda Woodrondo Ryan McDougall, Christmas Eve, 1999 Why now? How did I come to this point on this night? Willing to throw everything away like my father did more than 20 years before? Willing to do the very thing for which I hated him? With doomsday predicted by many in the scientific community, the Y2K bug loomed on everyone's mind. What did I care if planes fell from the sky because computers would not accept the year 2000? My world had already collapsed. What more could global chaos do to me? I tried for a year to save my marriage. Didn't tonight prove it was beyond help? Why stay any longer? Earlier, I finally learned the truth behind the secrets shrouding my life the trident that pierced my soul, yet revelation didn't bring peace. I pulled my jacket collar over my ears as I wandered down Maple Street, my mind jumbled by a lifetime of lies. Christmas, one more charade to add to the heap. To me, the holiday had become a one-act play where I pretended delight with feigned enthusiasm. For me, the holiday lost its magic many years ago when my father deserted us while I dreamed of Transformers under the tree. An eight-year-old doesn't expect to begin his favorite holiday in an upside-down world. I woke eager to tear open packages. Instead, I found no presents under the tree, no blueberry muffins, and no turkey in the oven. My mother sat on a chair. She stared blankly out the kitchen window a gold frame photograph on her lap. The picture of the pretty but sullen teenager. For reasons never shared with me, the unnamed girl ran away on her 16th birthday. I wondered why, from my earliest memory, her picture held a place of honor on the fireplace mantel. I shook my mother's shoulder. No response. Where was my father? He could explain what was wrong, why Christmas dreams turned into you tied nightmares. I searched for him, first his bedroom, then the entire house. Mom, where's Pop? She clutched the picture on her chest. He's gone, Ryan. Where did he go? It's Christmas. He promised to be here when I woke up. Pop was a telephone lineman. Whenever he went off for a job, he'd put on his yellow hard hat, rub my head, and say, take care of your mother until I get back. I'd al if I'd already gone to bed, he'd wake me up to give me the order. I always promised I would. I rushed to the window. There was a fresh snowfall overnight. Maybe Pop had been called out. If he hadn't come to wake me, he must have left in an awful hurry. He went someplace to save Christmas for other people. To me, my Pop was a superhero in yellow hard hat. My gaze wandered to the kitchen table adorned only with my father's yellow hard hat. Superman wouldn't forget his cape. Why did my father leave his hat? My child's heart sensed that I'd never see him again. From that point on, Christmas became another day on the calendar where I nursed a zombie-like woman who preferred her sorrow over her son, a woman who hopelessly waited for her man to come back.